Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want him. Make I like down in a green pastures. Him led it, I beside still water them. Him restored I soul. Him led it, I another part of I justness for him name's sake. Yay! Though I rasta go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't fear no evil for thy rod and I stab them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before I in the presence of our enemy them. Uno anointed I edu to no oil. Me cup run it over. Shall it? Goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. May I go dwell in the house of the Lord God Jah. Kadama we grama be a tila e exact beer. Tana istalina ba shante 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 shante. Oh how good and how pleasant it is for Jaja people to live together in peace, love and unity. It's like that precious ointment coming upon the head and the beard, the head and beard of ear, and all the way down his garments. For the Lord God Jah loved everybody when with everybody a gift of life. And I give thanks. How my wuso go lisa, Adam no wato, it was sick play of four. How watanyu mo, hey, oh you wala don. To do mana wuni. The fire pam. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Show no more. Where we speak truth to power in my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different shapes, sizes, colors, aromas, and even flavors. Put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot where they are subjected to some good amount of heating. They produce food in the aftermath. Food that they do not ironically participate in enjoying. Yet, they would always collaborate to produce that food. Who? Ah, those enjoying the food is us, the eaters. Yet, it doesn't really matter to the ingredients and the black pot. It's their duty to always produce the food. It's a lesson of generational thinking, a lesson of sacrifice, a lesson of selflessness. Any nation that does not have these ingredients cannot be called a nation. It's an empty box. My brother, you can have all the schools, all the hospitals, all the roads, as long as patriotism is lost amongst your people. The same old people will dig out gravel from out of the roots and sell and leave the new roots with potholes. They are the same people who will steal street lies. After all, even in our country, we believe when we steal from the government, we are smart. We are not thieves. We are just smart. We believe when we rob banks. It's okay. After all, we are actually not thieves. We are stealing from the politicians whose money is being stolen. The money of the people. My brother, my sister, it is on this note that we bring to you the black pot, a.k.a. Koko Shonomo, where we speak truth to power. Now here, if you are waiting to hear about sports, religion, or even politics, you will be disappointed. It's a show of patriotism. Here we speak pure patriotism. Here we don't do politics, we don't do sports, we don't do religion. It is all about patriotism. It's because of patriotism we are where we are today. Our ancestors won this country for us. But lack of patriotism has made us slaves in our own lands. We were supposed to be kings and queens, but we have become slaves and servants. All because we have thrown patriotism to the dogs. My brother, my sister, it's on this note that we come here every day to be able to remind you to be patriotic. We are live on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media, B-L-A-K-K -K Empire Media. And we are more than excited to come your way every day, Monday to Friday. My brother, my sister, thanks so much for allowing us into the comfort of your homes. 
please share the broadcast. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, it behoves you to do it. And if you haven't hit on the notification button so that each time we are on, you will be notified to watch, please do it now. Remember to share the broadcast, comment, and like. That way, we will be able to get the message across even faster. In the interim, we want to say thank you. We are also going on a 16 regional tour of Ghana. We're visiting all of Ghana. And what are we going to do? Now, the roadmap is very simple. We are beginning on the 2nd of March. We will be in WA. And when we arrive in WA, we will go to a school. We will be announcing that soon. And that school will have all other schools come to listen to us, talk to them for one hour. After that, we serve them hot meals and also give them drinks. Right after that, we take a short rest and then we climb the stage and perform for the people of the area. Tens of thousands of people will be coming to watch us. My brother, my sister, we need your support. We have written so many letters for sponsorship to so many different companies. We are yet to hear from these companies, my brother, my sister. It's only you who can do it. In our country, we are so prejudiced. We look at the messenger and not the message. Oh, the messenger wears these colors. Oh, the messenger is this. The messenger works like this. They totally concentrate on the messenger, forgetting the message. That is why we are where we are. Please donate. Of course, we have also heard that a number of people have sent us messages saying they are trying to send money from the United States of America and some other such places and is being blocked through send wave and other things. We are aware of that. We are going to come out with another number so that you can send it directly to us right here at Black Empire Media. My brother, my sister, it's going to work. We shall get a merchant number before the week ends and we shall bring that to the fore. In the interim, you can send us bank transactions. And our GT bank account is here. The SWIFT code comes after. And you can also send us Momo. It doesn't matter how big or how small support this so that we will raise our children and the next generation in nothing but patriotism so our nation can also be proud of our citizens and us is the blackboard aka kukushonomo where we speak truth to power i appreciate you and today we have five very important things to look at it's all about baomia Baomia has spoken. He has delivered a lecture. He decided to deliver a lecture. But the main people who should have been at the lecture did not come. Run the story, my youth. Akufuado, Gabi, Kenoforiata, absent at Baomia lecture. Come here, my youth. Wow. These are the... Three musketeers. They have refused to attend Baumia's lecture. We will find out why. But in the interim, run the story, make we see what I go on. Akufu Adu, Kenoforiata, Gabi, missing from Baumia lecture. Run the story. Watch this. It says, the conspicuous absence of the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, was yesterday felt as the new patriotic party's flag bearer once again voiced his opposition to electronic financial transaction taxes, commonly referred to as e-levy, firmly pledging to eliminate the levy if elected as president of Ghana in the upcoming December election. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has additionally disclosed plans for a new tax regime under his government, which includes taxes and which includes the abolition of the emission tax, betting taxes, and the proposed 15% tax on electricity tariffs, the latter to take effect if implemented by January 2025. Interestingly, President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado was equally absent from Dr. Baumia's public forum dubbed Baumia Speaks in Accra on Wednesday at the Kofi Ohinik Hanedu Auditorium, Auditorium of the University of Professional Studies, Accra. That's absent. 
Similarly, the president's trusted cousin, Gabi Ochredaku, was not cited at the venue. He was busy on social media X tweeting about La Côte d'Ivoire and the 2023 AFCON and wishing for all West African clash, yes, an all West African clash at Sunday's final between Nigeria and the host country. His wishes came true. This is not the first instance where Dr. Baumea has expressed discontent with the e levy. Prior to his passage in 2022, he openly opposed it during a live interview with Kwame Sefakai on Peace FM. Despite the vice president reservations, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata ignored the head of uh, the government's economic management team and swiftly presented the 2022 budget and economic statement uh, to parliament advocating for the adoption of the levy, even in the face of public outcry. The event was on the team Ghana's next chapter, selfless leadership and bold solutions for the future, which enabled the NPP flag bearer for the December election to outline his vision and priority policies for the nation if elected. Dr. Baumia means no words in declaring his opposition to taxes on electronic financial transactions, declaring that he will abolish E-Levy as president. Currently, students domiciled in Ghana but studying various courses through correspondence as a result of the E-Levy are paying outrageous amounts as fees because the foreign institutions have been instructed to pay charges on all electronic transactions between them and their students. Dr. Baumia declared, to move towards a cashless economy, however, we have to encourage the population to use electronic channels of payment. To accomplish this, there will be no taxes on digital payments under my administration. The e-levy will therefore be abolished. Dash it away. Baumia has all the wonderful ideas, yet he is a hypocrite. My brother, my sister, Baumia is supposed to be the Adam Smith of Ghana. But now he's blacksmith and everybody has come to see him. There's nothing Baumia would say that anybody will give him any credit for. Nobody would even respect what he says because of the dossier he has built for, for himself, a dossier of lies. Baumia is touted as the biggest liar, political liar, in Ghana's political space. His own president, the leader of the party, refused to attend. The finance minister, Keno Foriata, decided it was not important. He would not go there. Finally, Gabi Asari Ochredako also refused and that's the pseudo prime minister of the nation. That is clear. They are not happy with Baumia. They have alienated him. He's now a stepchild. In fact, Baumia is going to face the biggest political challenge of his lifetime. This was the man, Nana Kufuadu, who brought him from out of oblivion, brought him right into politics from outside and forced the Dombo brand on him for him to qualify as Buzia Nankwa Dombo. Pushed him into politics because he believed he had the economic brain. He didn't know that he was an empty vessel. Baumia came to us talking all the economics. At a point he was touted as Adam Smith. In no time, even after they had won the elections, the Wale Wale Adam Smith still believed that he was on a campaign spree, going around and still calling Mahama clueless, incompetent, and all those words. In no time, he had to swallow back all those words. All the things he accused Mahama for. In fact, he did them tenfold to the chagrin of Ghanaians. He has openly told Ghanaians that Nana Akufuado was the driver and he was the driver's mate. And the direction of the trot trot that they were driving, he couldn't tell his driver 
that this is where we have to go. My brother, my sister, Baumia is a hypocrite. Baumia is a liar. Baumia is criminal minded. All the accolades, all the credits that came to the Nana Akufu Ado government, he proudly came and accepted everything. It was because of his ingenuity that all these accolades, all the diadems came. My brother, my sister, free SHS. One district, one factory. When people were clamoring around these ideas, Baumia was seen as the master think tank. When they started falling apart, he said, well, me, I was only a mate. In fact, if Nana Akufu Ado was the driver and you were his mate, then he has trained a very terrible student. No bad teacher produces a good student. Why should we vote for you? Today, he has disgraced Nana Akufu Ado to the point that Nana Akufu Ado doesn't even want to attend any of his lectures. Have you realized how Baumia has all of a sudden stood up against Akufuado? Remember we told you this years back that there would be a conflict between the two of them. He's a sellout. This guy is worse than a sellout. He's a house nigger. And I'm going to explain to you. My brother, you sat under Nana Akufuado to destroy the nation. There was no day you walked out of the slave plantation to say that you are against slavery. Now that you have become the slave master, or now that you want to become the slave master, you are saying all sorts of bad things about your original slave master. My brother, if Baumia had resigned even a year ago, and said that because of the way this country is going, because of the way the president is driving this trotro, I, the driver's mate, I have decided to resign. People would have taken him seriously and given him credit, and a lot of people would have gathered around him. But greed, selfishness, wickedness, chop, chop, he stayed in there. After they voted you as the running the presidential aspirant for the party, all of a sudden, you are wearing binoculars and you can see all kinds of rot in the Nana Kufuado government. Well, I'll give him one credit. And the credit is that even still as the vice president, he has started to criticize the Nana Kufuado. When they were going to pass E-Levy, what happened? My brother, my sister, a lot of things happened. They flew people, MPs, from all over the world in chartered flights. Even those who were on the surgeon's tables and their heads had been split into two and the surgeon was reading their brains like a newspaper. Canada, Japan, on my mind. They flew them into this country. They had to pay bribes to Ajua Safo. Pay money into her Fidelity bank account. Send a whole convoy to her house to carry the queen of Ghanaian politics all the way to the parliament house to vote when she was not ready to come because she said family first. She was in America chilling with her family. She would not come. They begged her and brought her to come and vote for E-Levy. Baumia was against E-Levy. But at the end of the day, what did Opon Kruma, the information minister, say? That he was instrumental in drafting the sheet that produced E-Levy. So what kind of a hypocrite is this? You are against slavery, yet you are benefiting from slave exploits. You claim you are a vegetarian. Why should you wear shoes made of leather? You claim you are a vegetarian. Why must you wear a belt that is made up of leather? Eh? These are the things we're talking about. Baumia is a hypocrite. His lecture I never wasted my time to listen to him. It's the same old lies on repeat. The same old ideas that he claims he has had all this while, yet he's limp like a dead penis. Impotent. It's sad. 
So these people did not attend. The president has regretted bringing Baumia in from nowhere. When he was asked recently, he said, yes, I brought him because of his brains. Where are the brains? But Nana Akufuado should learn a great lesson. You are a dirty dictator. You see how people are running away from you. Your own vice president has sold you out that you are a useless president. He says he will be his own man. That you are a dirty dictator who doesn't listen to anybody. Therefore, whatever he wanted to do, you blocked him. Now he's free as a bird and he can implement his policies as a president. Nobody wants to associate with Nana Akufuado now. Have you seen anybody who's trying to associate with Nana Akufuado now? All of them are running away. You are a bad president. A dirty, bad president. Everybody's running away from, from you. Nobody wants to be around you except the two other musketeers. Keno Furiata and then Gabi. For obvious reasons. You come from the same loins. So, they are following you. Anybody who wants to lose elections in Ghana should just start praising you. They will lose the election. What kind of a president have you been? Look at the disgrace you brought to us. Oh, eh, I've not been able to solve the problems of Ghana, but the next president is going to solve them. If you are told us this from the beginning, we would never have voted you. You are a traitor. Traitor when you were busy running around, borrowing money all over the place and we're warning you, you never listen to us. Such a dirty president. Oversized suit. He will wear all that. No sense of fashion. You wear this expensive suit. That doesn't even look good on you. You only need to go and beg for money. Look how they have thrown us like trash in front of the IMF and the World Bank. The next generation is going to suffer because of the dirty deeds of this generation and even beyond. So when we speak with them, we don't show them any respect. A man who is trying to kill me deserves no respect. Akufaro didn't attend. Kero Foriata didn't attend. Gabi didn't attend. So they have all thrown Baumia out of the bathtub. Shh. Go away. You are on your own. It's the black pot. A.K.A. Koko Shonomo. But what did Baumia really say? That's it. What did Baumia really say? Baumia gives lecture on presidency. Who is Baumia? And people who wasted their time to go and listen to the liar tone, I'm sure they have Regretted. I didn't waste my time. My brother, my sister. Run the story, my youth. Watch this. It says from Ghana Web 10 major talking points from Baumier's Ghana Next Chapter Lecture. Run it, my youth. 10. Vice President Mahmoudou Baumia on February 7, that's yesterday, 2024. Delivered his first major speech since his election as flag bearer of the new patriotic party NPP ahead of the 2024 polls. At the lecture dubbed Ghana's Next Chapter, Selfless Leadership and Bold Solutions for the Future, Baumia presented his vision for Ghana. Now, the hours long lecture featured majorly an account of the work of the Akufu Ado Baumia government over the last seven years and his personal vision for various sectors of the Ghanaian economy if he selected president. Social media was flooded with contents of his presentation, which spanned governance, economy, jobs, politics, and religion, amongst other topical areas of national discourse. Ghana Web looks at 10 major talking points as played out on social media. Per you know, they are tracking of con conversations on X and Facebook particularly. Number one, abolition of taxes. How many of them? One, two, and a third one. Three taxes. Taxes on gambling will be scraped, or better still scrapped, under my administration. There will be no emissions tax under my administration. 15% tax on electricity will be abolished by 2025 if it's still on our administration. In the case 
of the VAT on electricity, government has announced a suspension of the tax handle to allow for consultations with major stakeholders. Hold it there. Go back, go back. Now watch this. This is a man who says that he's a Muslim. And he says he's going to take out taxes on gambling. When you remove taxes on things, you encourage them and make them easy. So taxes on loto, taxes on betting, so the people can now go out and bet. Populist propaganda. The Muslim community should see the sheikh that they have voted into power. Of course, the nation is not all Muslim. Even non-Muslims are not interested in this dirty betting. Betting is gambling. Lotto is gambling and is haram. The youth are those who are running after voting. In my days, it was old, old retired men who did lotto. You see them working and sleeping. Then they'll tell you they have sure banker. Today, Lotto has been taken to another level. It's betting. Now on social media, even people bet with sex. You play a certain game. When you win, a lady starts to remove her shirt. She will remove and remove until there's nothing to remove anymore. Then you will join. That is the level we have taken the betting to. People are betting all over the place. It's crazy. It's mad. Baumia says he would encourage gambling. Lotto. Chief Imam, this is your boy. Muslim community, he says he would encourage gambling by taking off the taxes. The chief Imam ordered that they should put billboards all over. The Muslim community, gambling is haram. We don't like gambling. And they put them out. Baumia says he will encourage gambling. My brother, that he will remove all these taxes that Nana Kufuado has put out. So what is happening? Is Nana Kufuado not listening to him? Run it, my youth. This is number one. Abolition of three taxes. My God. Private sector on road construction. He says, I believe that the private sector should finance the construction and maintenance of roads through PPP concession arrangements. This policy will energize the private sector and create many jobs. Baumia affirmed, underscoring the potential economic benefits of increased private sector involvement in public service provision. My brother, he says private sector should take care of this. Now what happened to our Ghana contractors? The government had its own contractors. Do you remember? Bank of Housing and Construction was there. We had the PWD. Public Works Department, right? What were they doing? State Construction Company, SCC, right? They were also there. And they are still there. What is the importance of the SCC? What is the importance of the PWD, people works, people's uh, 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 public works department? The government is employing people to be able to deal with construction of roads, housing, and so on and so forth. All kinds of roads. My brother, my sister, it's time to empower those people. When you say you are going to give it to private people, profit starts to come in. Prices are going to be inflated. My brother, my sister, at the end of the day, yes, we shall have competition, which is good for us, but the prices are going to skyrocket because the main aim is profit. I don't know how many people are following this economics. State Housing Corporation. S. HC, where is it? The straight construction company, where is it? The PWD, where are they? Now you want to use this to create jobs for the boys. Oh, give us money to do our elections. We will give you a contract to build a road from here to there. In some countries, 
it is the governments that partake in that. They have departments that do that. They have ministries that do that. But with us, we have to bring Chinese to build our roads for us. Bring Indians to build roads for us. Italians to build roads for us. What happened to our knowledge in construction and housing? All these years, the University of Science and Technology has been training people to deal with construction. Right? What is happening? Why can't they do it? Who has the government employed to do it? When was the last time you heard uh, about SHC, State Housing Corporation? How about the PWD? Oh, Jesus have mercy. We need to go back to those state institutions. I have no problem if the state institutions would need some help from the private sector and therefore will sublet some of the contact to these people. But there would be more decency than to give the work out to a private company and then when you are out of power, everything is dead. But when the state companies handle that, whether you are in power or not, they would have to continue because it's the government of Ghana, not the government of the NPP or the government of the CPP. I don't know how many people see the wisdom in this. Review of NSS. Ladies and gentlemen, to help our youth get jobs, I believe it is time to rethink the concept of our current national service scheme. My government would propose that those who, after completion of their education, can secure jobs would be exempted from national service. My brother, he says, when you finish school and you know you can get jobs immediately they won't let you do national service you should just go ahead and do it eh? now ask yourself what is the importance of national service as the name suggests serving your nation so if i get a job in america if i get a job in canada what happens should i go Maybe he explains it better. He says, national service will no longer be mandatory. And students will have the option to decide whether to do national service or not. This will also encourage companies to go to campuses for recruitment annually. What a massacre. When you go to Israel, it is by force that you do national service. By force that you do training in the army. I've been to Israel. University students hold guns on the streets of Tel Aviv. All the way down to the Gaza. Men and women are trained militarily. Oh yes, it's a war zone. But this is a nation that is embroiled with so much corruption. So what do you do? You put corruption codes on everybody. It's a nation that is full of laziness. It should be a must that people do their national service to serve their nation and get experience. I would understand if they finish and they are employed immediately. If they are employed immediately in the nation, they are still serving the nation. And for that matter, government can save the money that it would have used to pay them. That is an exemption. But to make it a blanket statement and say that it's mandatory. So when I finish, what do you do to tell your nation that you are happy? What is the difference between foreign students and these students? You finish and you can decide to serve the nation or not. You walk around. It, does, it smacks of unpatriotism. What's the patriotism? National service was so sweet. In my days, when I finished, they sent me to a... a, 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 a has that area called, and I went to teach French. Some of my friends were sent all the way to Pesingpe. Some were sent all the way to Durigaga. Some went to Salaga. Some went to Tumu. Some went to Dolinbizon. Some went all the way to Swambising. Others went all the way to Bongo and Bongo Swain. My brother, when they came back, they told us beautiful stories. They gathered experience. You want to take out all this experience. But Baumia himself, did he do national service? Can he show his certificate? National service is beautiful. 
Imagine somebody from Accra who has been on the streets of Accra fast life and he's been taken to Bongo Swain or Bongoda and he's asked to go there and do his national service. Oh yes, he will learn village life. He will learn how to go and fetch water from a bucket. When he happens to hold a political position, he understands firsthand what it is the people of Bongo Swain or Bongo Da are going through. That's why Islam is beautiful. It says fast whether you are rich or poor. When you fast and you feel the hunger pangs, next time a man sees and says, well, I am hungry, you will know what it means to say hunger firsthand. Baumia says he will cancel all this so that you can decide whether you want to do national service. After all, you'll be guy. He thinks he has said something smart. Does it make sense to you? One year national service must be by force. In my days, you can never enter the university without a national service certificate. And I did my national service for two years. They were paying us small, small money. But it was okay. Some of us, that was the first earning we were having. The young girls would come to us. Alawa, Alawa, we used to call it Alawa. You come to us and it was prideful to go to the bank and collect your Alawa. When you came out, your wings would start opening up. Yeah, Charlie. I remember my mother teasing me. Hey, so you two have started receiving salary. And she would send my little sisters to come to me, say, your brother has received salary. Go, he would give you some. And I was proud. To give them CD, 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 CD. Today, Baumia says, mm -mm. when you finish and you want to fly to Israel, fine. You want to go to Jamaica, fine. You want to go to America, forget national service. After all, they have no money to pay. They train people for free. Oh, Jesus. Defense of Bank of Ghana. He defended the Bank of Ghana's decision to lend to government, assuring that the monies will be paid back. That's it. My brother. I wish I could go through all the trash that he said. Some of them are heavy and good, but coming from Baumia, nobody trusts him. So they trash it and send it away. Akufado didn't attend. Keroforiata didn't attend. Gabi Asaroch said Aku didn't attend. It was only Kufuo who attended. And Kufuo, unfortunately, spoke before Baumia. And what did Kufuo say? He said, oh, you know, he's a man of destiny. He has a mission. God has put him on a mission. Which God? Which God? The God of gambling? Or the God of lies? Which one? If Kufuwa had spoken after Baumia, I'm sure he wouldn't have lived consciously. To hear Baumia say everything would have collapsed in the middle of Baumia's lies. It's a black pot. Come here. A.K.A. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we have more liatons coming up. Hey! Woyo! It's the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo, where we speak truth to power. Next to worry about you. Keep your messages coming in. 
Ghana to own 100% gold reserves under Baumia. <laughs> Baumia says, when he becomes president, gold, Ghana gold, we will own 100%. Now we are getting 2%, 1%. The highest we are getting from the lithium deal is about between 8 and 12 percent. And they are still fighting it. I still don't understand. Takwa School of Mines. Haven't they been able to produce competent people to mine our gold and our diamond? And every time we have to run after British, Americans, Germans, and all those people to come and dig our gold for us. And they take 98 percent and give us 1 percent and give us until in 0 2 point. Is 1%. What is happening to us? I am happy to hear that Baumia says that when he comes into power, 100% of the gold will be for us. Why didn't he do it whilst Nana Akufuado was there? Why? Is Akufuado a dictator? He doesn't listen to his own vice president. That is what Baumia is saying. I am interested in this. That we can own 100% of our gold reserves. It's not happening anywhere in Africa. That we own 100%. South Africa has done so well with its gold mines. You go to Johannesburg and it's a golden city. Some other such countries have come near owning 100%. Not West Africa. Not East Africa. Baumia says he will let it happen. Let's see how he will make it happen. Run it, my youth. Ghana will own 100% of gold reserves under my government. This is Dr. Baumia talking. Flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has made a clear case for the maximization of the benefits from the country's natural resources to help create jobs, improve livelihoods, and boost the domestic economy. He stated that given the large amounts of gold reserves Ghana possesses, his government, when giving the nod, will legislate a policy that allows areas with proven gold reserves to be 100% Ghanaian gold. Hold it there. Was it not the same Baumia who was supporting Ejapa? We should sell our gold reserves to the people. It was the same Baumia, right? Why? He didn't know this. Oh, yeah, to help the nation, develop the nation. Yeah, we'll be able to... You see, these people... If somebody just shows them small money, they are ready to take the money and sell out the whole gun. How could Baumia be supporting Ejapa? And you all know what Ejapa was all about. We'll go and take some money and people will come and own all the gold reserves in Ghana. The mining hops, not only gold. Today, Baumia says when he becomes president, we will own all 100%. How about the Countries that already have contracts with our gold. How, what are you going to do? You're going to sack them? What are you really going to do? He said this policy would also build Ghana's gold reserves appreciably to reach a point where the country can boast of sufficient gold reserves to keep external payments in a, a strong and sustainable position. Baumia was the one who did the gold for oil. Or is it oil for gold? Or is it commutative? My government will provide the geological survey department and our universities with resources annually to undertake a mapping of areas where we have gold reserves. That's another dangerous thing. That means before we realize anywhere in Ghana that gold is found, destroying flora and fauna. Maybe I will be the only president who will never be, who would come to this country and say, all mining activities cease. All oil and whatever cease. It's an agrarian economy. We have our factories that produce agricultural products and so on and so forth. And if oil exploration would even be done, it will be done to satisfy only the nation. Forget about exportation. The sense behind it is to avoid pollution. Whatever energy 
we are going to be drilling, we will use it for our own factories so that we don't import. Just domestic, so that we minimize destroying flora and fauna. But no, we have gold. Let's exploit it all. We have oil. Yeah, let's do it. Maximum. We are polluting everywhere. Chinese cannot pollute their land. They come here to do the pollution that they can't do in their country. Indians can't do that in India. It's here they do it. Americans can't do it in America. It's here they come and do it. In Ghana, any idiot can come here and do anything at all and go away. After all, our leaders are stupid. They allow them to do anything. Two people have committed the same crime, a white and a black. They throw the black man in there and allow the white man to go away. After all, his skin is not too good for our prison. Oh, his skin is so delicate. If he goes into our prison, mosquitoes will bite him. He'll have malaria. But the black man is okay. Go in there. That mentality. That shit away, brethren. When we return, we got to do more. Your messages will be read. Come here. We shall read your messages. And we also have more. It's the blackboard. Hey! Wayo! Come on! Come on! It's the Blackboard, a.k.a. Koko Shonamo, and here we speak truth to power. Let's see your messages. All right. Zacha Emmanuel, a.k.a. Governor, all the way from Wusuta, says, Ja! Wanini boy says, Wayoi. Welcome, King Black. Governor from Wusuta says, Ghana shall prosper. La Bong Pyramid says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Dej. Yes. I could feel the pains in his voice. As an extra emotional person, I have not recovered yet. We need you to recover so we can fight more. Harriet Amu says, Black, speak truth to power. Patriotism, not politics. Oh, yes, Harriet. Blessed love, Harriet. Mira says, Welcome, Black Rasta. Jaja will continue to bless you. For the good works, Rap Thunder says, Isha Allah Ghana shall rise again. Wayoi. Oh, Odum says, Baumia is a joke. Just like his father, Kufuado. I will. Mero says, it's me, sweet papito. My wife loves you always and listens to you. Oh, my God. And she uses her phone instead. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you use her phone to watch this, right? Wow. She's in America. She's an American. Uh, she doesn't like this country. She didn't like this country when she arrived last year, August. But watching you every day makes her happy to live here. Wow. American woman. Of course, she comes from a country where there's some decency. But she's in a country where there's crime everywhere. A friend of mine from England said he came in to do some work for the government. And all government appointees are asking him for bribes, 10% be before the work is signed, and so on. And so. They are all animals. Monkeys who should be locked up in prison. They have no common sense of decency. What would bribe do to you? Mohammed Banjaya once says, it's time, and we are glued to our seats around the Hot black pot to be fed with wisdom by the legendary black rasta to boost the level of patriotism in us and to be able to build a better Africa. Signed, MC Scorpion from Ashaiman. Mirror says, uh, 
It makes her love the country, yes? She now knows the leaders are those making us suffer. All right, so that's a continuation of Miro's message. Rasmilian says, I salute you, Bulak. I, it feels so bad to hear such old men lying day by day. How do they take, what do they take Ghanaians for? The old devil and his family have realized that Baumia is useless. That's why they didn't attend. As for Baumia, his Ghana's political Mr. Bean, joking, joking, and joking. So sad. Emmanuel Mokodazi says, uh, Welcome, Black. Oh, yo. Benzino says, uh, Baolaya, Baolaya, Baolaya. The comedian in Ghana politics since 1992. Liar speech started yesterday till December. Pure failure, failure. Uh, economists. Uh, well, he says, Wale Wale Adam Smith. Now he's blacksmith. Mm. Oh, yo. Dash. Labisa says, Bawu Shaggy. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I saw you banging on the sofa. It wasn't me. I see you singing Bada. It wasn't me. I see you giving us taxes. It wasn't me. I see you giving us e levy. It wasn't me. I see you lying. It wasn't me. I see them employed. It wasn't me. Everything. So it's Bawu Shaggy. Shaggy. Mr. Fantastic Romantic Lover, Shaggy. Nabon Pyramid says, I have seen voting in Africa as a sin. Because it's like helping a thief to break into a bank and steal more. When you assist a thief to steal, you are also a thief, of course. I see the point you're making, Virgin. That is why we have to be very careful when we are voting. And to make it worse, we should never accept any favors in order to vote. That is why, if we don't accept so, such favors and we vote and they are misbehaving, we can come out and speak the way we are speaking and get them out. Can't you see the way I speak to, 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 to them? You know why I'm able to do that? None of them have I ever taken a penny from. None, none of them. They don't even know where to find me. I prefer being hungry. My ghetto people take care of me. Not them. Left them alone, we would have died long ago. Benjamin Achu says, I can proudly tell you that every word comes out, coming out of Baulaya's mouth is Akufu Ado and his cabinet approved. And none of them is sorry about this. It's a shameful thing. Mm -mm. I only feel sorry for the country, Ghana. Benzino says, yesterday was a pure circus and a lot of clowns around. I thank my God I didn't waste my precious time to listen to that speech. A driver's mate couldn't resign because his boss was uh, a dictator and very arrogant. After Nana destroyed the nation, you come back and tell us what? That it wasn't you. Bao Shaggy. He should have left. But their stomachs are more important to them than the nation. Bao Mia is a shameful guy. You know? He has the gas to tell us to vote for him. Yet he's criticizing his boss. And saying that it wasn't him, it was his boss. I'm sure by now Akufuado has a heart attack and is at home. Don't be shocked by tomorrow you hear that the, the president is in the hospital. I see you with gas, all kinds of gases around him. Because this one is a slap in the face from Baumia. Yes. Benjamin Achu says every single one of them at the conference are not true to themselves. Neither are they true to Ghana. Labisa says, uh, you buy bus, get driver and meet. Four weeks later, the car starts getting problems. Uh, and it costs uh, the people hired not uh, to maintain it, but they carry overloading. And you complain that uh, what? 
Well, we understand the point this person is trying to make, Labisa. Uh, Kelly, San Sanko, Kelly, says, when Nanette's picture popped out his suit, I knew the next verse from Dada would be oversized suit. Then, bam, Dada said it. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, oversized suit. Wow. Rasmillian says, still, uh, we have people who are still defending these criminals just because of the little coins they get from them. It's heartbreaking that those ignoramuses uh, sell their families right to these thieves. God is watching. Labisa says, Bao Shaggy, it wasn't me, was uh, particularly saying that Akufuado's government, which he was part of, is incompetent. Wanda Africa says, this is uh, the main motive behind raising SDA issue to hold the election in September instead of December 7. A coup may occur in August. Wow. Interesting. Well, we don't want a coup. We want them to get out from the ballot box. That's it. We are tired of the coups and the aftermath of coups. Faisal the Naba says, watching you live from Boku at the 15 Boku na. Naba Palace, Alaji Seydu Suleimana, Kuliga Abagri, Na Sharga the second. Faisal the Naba says, the first day I knew that Akufuado was a devil himself when he came to Boku and said that the Supreme Court has settled the Boku chieftaincy <laughs> dispute. <laughs> Jay Kulman says, Baumia is the third force. First, Adanaba says it means uh, uh, they cannot find a ruling in the court, and there's already a big problem in Boko. Uh, Ayagbede Sairam says uh, Ghana needs a lie detector machine for our politicians. Serious times. I agree with you, Ayagbede. Mm, lie machine. Rawlings was asking for that. I tell you, if they put a lie machine, on Baumia, the hands will hit the end and break the glass in there. You know, it's something that goes like this. Kick, kick. When it goes to go, bah! And blast it. Next story, my youth. Ghana Coco dying from swollen shoe disease. Come here, my youth. How many of us watched this show yesterday? Do you remember that I talked to you about biological warfare? Do you remember? Ghana cocoa is the best cocoa in the world. There's a fight against Ghana cocoa using our own dirty leaders. This is the swollen shoot disease. It makes it like this and destroys it. Now they are importing chemicals from so many different countries. These same countries, their biggest dream is to have Ghana cocoa in their countries. Would they sell you the right chemicals? to keep you abreast and in front of the race. So the chemicals are killing this. Apart from killing the cocoa, there's something that the farmers can no longer stand erect. Some of them are collapsing, and they have to go get milk to come and revive them and resuscitate them. It's a biological warfare. Run it, my youth. Ghana loses over 500,000, that's half a million hectares of cocoa farms to swollen shoot viral disease. Come here, my youth. We are about to go. Now, the chief executive of Ghana Cocoa Board, Cocoa Board, uh, Honorable Joseph Boahin Edu, who was my lecturer at the university, has revealed that over half a million hectares of cocoa farms in Ghana have been lost to the cocoa swollen shoot viral disease posing a major threat to the country's cocoa production. Dash it. If you have his photo, put it there. That's a him. He was my lecturer. Very quiet. You come and lecture and go away. Very disciplined. This is what politics can do to great people. You know why he's coming to say swollen shoot has destroyed blah blah because they have started going to Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria to import cocoa. They want to find a way to justify it. It's sad. It's a biological warfare. They buy cheap chemicals. 
Some of them are even donated to them. But there is no free lunch. When they come, kafu, 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 impotence, eye problems. Ghanaians and Africans must understand what free lunch is all about and stay away from that. Free bees sting like bees. Think about it. Ghana, write it down. Ghana must stay away from charity. Absolutely. Free bees sting like bees. Oh, Jesus. That's it. This is the final story now. And what is the story saying? Watch this. It's interesting. An interesting piece. Prophet diagnosis. Prophet diagnosis of Black Star's poor performance. Prophet diagnosis of Black Star's poor performance. There's a prophet who is so respected in Ghana. They call him Prophet Kwatin. People respect him a lot. In his church, women have to cover their hair. They have to dress like ancient church women and all that. Quite decent. But he has said something that is quite controversial. And he has to do with the Black Star's poor performance. Let's check it out. Prophet reveals how Asamoah Jan, the day I used Captain C, change became tipping point of Black Star's failure. Run it. The founder of House of Power Ministry International, Prophet Francis Quatin, has revealed how the row over the captain's armband between Asamoah Jan and Andre the day Ayu led to the Black Star's current woes. Ahead of the 2019 AFCON, Coach Kwesi Apia took the captain's armband, armband from Asamoah Jan and handed it to Andre Ayu, a situation which nearly saw Jan retire bitterly from the national team. According to Prophet Kwatin, Coach Kwesi Apia uh, created a fracas be because he failed to ensure that there was peace and understanding between the two players before proceeding with his decision in 2029. 2019, I beg your pardon. He said... You remember when the captain C was taken from Asamojan and given to Dede Ayu. So there is so much pain in the team. Asamojan said he had to endorse Kwesi Apia before he was made Black Stars coach. And the coach visited him in Saudi Arabia. So he was uh, shocked. The coach never told him about changing captain C. Prior to the change of captain C, Ghana had reached the semi-final of the 2017 AFCON, placing fourth at the tournament. However, since the change in leadership, the Black Stars have never been able to go beyond the quarter-final stage. This, according to the prophet, is the result of Andre Ayu's rush to become the national team captain. Note that. Since the day Ayu became captain, have you seen the Black Stars win matches? If you think I'm, uh, I'm lying, let him go to his village to consult the gods and see if there's a lie in what I am saying. Every time we go out at the, at the group stage, every time we go out at the group stage, I am a little disappointed that the prophet is directing people to the gods of their village because it is not his fate. It's a way of endorsing it. And if you believe in the gods too, let us know. So what is the solution? He didn't tell us. Is it to sack Lady Ayu and bring back Asamojan or to take the band from him and give it to a different person? What is the solution? Now, people must understand something. Kwesi Apia and Dede Ayu's father, Abedi Pele, were not even on talking terms. But when he became captain, it was under the coaching of Kwesi Apia. I'm talking about the DIU. Many people said, oh, because Kwesi Apia and Abedi Pele were not on good terms, and Abedi Pele's two children are in the Black Stars team, they will not get a good treatment from Kwesi Apia. But Kwesi Apia doesn't keep grudges. We interviewed him here, remember? 
And he mentioned it. I don't keep grudges. I just look at who plays best. And I realize that Dede Ayou would be able to do it because he spoke different languages, French, English, and even more than Asamoajan. And what is the captain all about? It's not necessarily about who is older than who or who is senior in the Black Stars team. Maybe Kwesia Pia did not explain it to whip up their patriotism. He just took it away. We don't honor our heroes. Maybe that was the mistake he made. He should have explained it better so that egos would not be bruised. But to say that that is the reason the Black Stars is failing, is it spiritual or is it technical? Which one is it? If it's spiritual, what is the solution? If it's technical, what is the technical bit of it? We need to understand it better. So if Dede Ayu is removed right now, the team will now win caps? Or should we bring back Asamoajan? In fact, the whole thing is a little vague. Get deeper into it. We are a spiritual people, and we like to hear from the spiritual side of our issues. It's the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shodemo. And here we speak truth to power. Shall we see your closing messages? And we'll be done for the day. Closing messages. All right? And remember, it's the Black Pot. Ah. Remember, we are going on a 16 nation, 16 regional tour of Ghana. Make sure that you donate to a good cause. We'll be so happy to receive you. And those in America and other places who are sending us money and we are not getting it, we shall resolve that very soon. We thank you. We thank you. And we shall acknowledge everybody. And that is the number there. All right. So Abdul Rahman says, uh, Hi, Black Rasta, more fire. 24-hour economy says, Baumia is a liar. Nene Kate says, A driver's mate who can say bar stop when passengers want to alight is hyper incompetent and should never be allowed close to a steering wheel. Baumia is a big time liar. I agree with you. Tompo says, My brother, why are you not coming to face book again? Or is it because we Facebook, <laughs> we Facebook, don't have money to come to YouTube. Uh, all right, well, I've explained it several times. Tom Poe still wants us to do it on Facebook as well. The numbers on Facebook were not really encouraging, and we felt that you would love it more on YouTube. That's why we decided to concentrate on YouTube. But if this is what you want, why not? We will, we will, we will be on Facebook as well. Yeah? Rap Thunder says, Legendary Black. I know politics is a dirty game, but I think if you become president of this nation, nothing will be like dirty politics. Well, my destiny is that I'm a kingmaker, not a king. If I force myself to be king, I will fail. Harry Watson, KJC says, Baumia is now Baushagi. And Rap Thunder says, I can't change your heart to think to be a president of this nation. But I always pray to the Almighty Allah to do that for us, but not me. Isha Allah. May Allah change your mind so that we are. Well, we'll still look for who can be there and then we'll guide them. It's almost like we are there, but we shall guide them so they can make things happen. Tom Poe says, uh, Hey, Baumia, who was campaigning for all taxes, saying what today? Oh, why Jack Toronto? nephew. Oh, why? Jack Toronto nephew. Kwame Logoso says, uh, you kept skipping mine. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll check it out. Harry Watson, KJC, says, listening to Baumia yesterday was so painful. God, please save us from the hands of Baumia. Okay, time now to go. I appreciate you. I love you. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo. Is that American? Please mention a name so we can shout there as well. We love you and we appreciate you. It's been the Black Pot. If you are not sharing this page, please share and subscribe. I love you. Whoa! Oh. Oh. <laughs>